This is Nightline, and I'm Sabrina Zainal. The top stories. Malaysian economy shows minimal impact amid Middle East tensions. And suspect in KLIA shooting arrested in Kelantan. Good morning. We begin with this story. Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim has assured that the impact of the ongoing Middle East conflict on the Malaysian economy has been minimal thus far. In a statement, he noted that despite the geopolitical uncertainties, the impact on the Malaysian economy remained contained, with the uh, Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange experiencing only marginal dips aligned with regional trends. Nonetheless, he said the Madani government will continue to monitor the situation very closely and take proactive measures to ensure the security, welfare and well-being of all Malaysians. Earlier on Monday, the Prime Minister chaired a special meeting of the National Security Council. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Zahid Hamidi, Defence Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Khalid Nordin, Home Affairs Minister Datuk Sri Saifuddin Asution Ismail, Foreign Affairs Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Hassan, Chief Secretary to the Government Tan Sri Muhammad Zuki Ali, and other senior government officials also participated in the meeting. He added that the meetings held on two consecutive days show the seriousness in which the Madani government views the developments as well as the efforts that will be taken to shield Malaysia and Malaysians from its impact. The Prime Minister also pointed out that the launching of the drones by Iran is a legitimate act following the barbarous attack by the Israeli Zionist regime against the Iranian embassy in Damascus, Syria. He added that Putrajaya welcomed assurances from Iran that its response would be the extent of their action provided there were no further provocations by Israel. Anwar said the key to resolving this issue is the just and immediate resolution of the inhumane situation in Gaza. Therefore, he said global attention must be devoted fully to it, with no distractions, adding that there must be a durable ceasefire which will enable the passage of humanitarian aid. In relation to this, Anwar noted that Malaysia's latest contribution of 100 containers is expected to leave Malaysia on April 27th. Meanwhile, the United States is renewing efforts to push through a stalled funding package for Israel, despite stressing it will not help with any counteroffensive measures against Iran. President Joe Biden told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in a phone call late on Sunday that the U.S. would not take part in any retaliatory action in response to Iran's air attack the previous day. However, despite Biden joining global calls for restraint, the rising tensions in the Middle East look set to accelerate approval of a stalled funding package that would see Washington hand Netanyahu 14 billion U.S. dollars in aid. The Iranian attack, which came in response to a strike on Iran's embassy in Syria on April 1st, saw more than 300 missiles and drones launched towards Israel. Try to protect myself. In the meantime, Israel's European allies also urged the country on Monday to show restraint over Iran's weekend missile and drone attack. And its Western allies, including France, Germany and Britain, have appealed for Israel to show restraint, warning over further escalation in the region. This after United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres emphasized the need for de-escalation and urged all parties involved to exercise maximum restraint. Now, Iran and Israel, however, concentrated on accusing one another of being a threat to peace. Israel's war cabinet, meanwhile, remains determined to respond to Iran's attack, but as it convened Monday afternoon, its members continue to debate the timing and scope of such a response. Back home, the suspect involved in the Kuala Lumpur International Airport KLIA shooting incident, Hafizul Hawari, who was arrested on Monday afternoon, will be remanded on Tuesday to facilitate probe into Sunday's incident. The 38-year-old was armed with a pistol when he was arrested on Jalan Bayam in Kutubaru, Kelantan. Inspector General of Police Tan Sri Razaruddin Hussein had earlier confirmed the arrest of the suspect, who has past criminal records. 
It was just meters away from the Kelantan Contingent Police Headquarters that the 38-year-old suspect was apprehended in front of the Perdana Specialist Hospital at 3 p.m. He was arrested by a team of officers and members from the Special Crime Investigation Department, D9, of the Kelantan Contingent Criminal Investigation Department, CID. It is reported that the suspect was apprehended after a scuffle. Police seized the pistol from the suspect, who was alone at the time of arrest. Hafizul has three criminal records, including theft and impersonating a public servant. He was also arrested last February for making criminal intimidation against his wife. In the 1.30 a.m. incident on Sunday, a man fired two shots, one of which hit his wife's bodyguard. The victim is currently being treated at a hospital and is reported to be in stable condition. And as to why police did not immediately take action during the shooting, Selangor Police Chief Dato Hussein Omar Khan explained that it was because bystanders were at risk and could have been injured or worse. Kita tidak menggunakan keadaan keadaan engage pada ketika itu melihatkan itu adalah kawasan awam. Lebih baik kita keluarkan dia dari perintah kawasan itu dan selamatkan orang awam dulu. Itu kaedah yang terbaik daripada kita engage dengan suspek yang bersenjata api. He also said that police have recorded statements from 11 individuals so far, including witnesses. Police also expect to record statements from those involved in business dealings with the victim and the suspect to assist in the probe into the incident. On security at the KLIA, Hussein said there is a need for stricter security measures at the country's main airport. Jadi kat pintu masuk tu, kalau orang bawa mencun contohnya, uh, sama macam dia bawa mencun di tempat awam. Jadi mungkin di situ kena ketatkan lah supaya orang tak bawa. Barang-barang uh, yang terlarang, yang boleh membahayakan uh, orang awam, ataupun uh, uh, mereka yang pergi ke KLIA ataupun airport itu terancam. He also said police are planning to use electric scooters at KLIA for police to respond faster and patrol areas more efficiently. He noted that the state government had agreed to buy the scooters, adding that this would be the first time the police deploy such equipment in Malaysia. The bodyguard's wife, when met at the Cyber Jaya Hospital, said her husband is scheduled to undergo a major surgery on Tuesday. Siti Nur Aida Hassan said Muhammad Nur Hadith's condition is still critical at the hospital's intensive care unit, ICU. Siti Nur Aida said she was informed that the doctor was still waiting for intestinal bleeding to stop and that his condition needs to be stable before the surgery can be performed. Sekarang masih dalam tahap kritikal uh, dan uh, dijangka esok pagi akan uh, buat uh, second operation untuk uh, doktor tengok baliklah uh, untuk sebab usus dia sebelum ni uh, peluru tu terkena usus usus kecil dia jadi uh, doktor, doktor tak buat uh, apa apa uh, lagi lah uh, so esok uh, akan buat major operation. Recalling the time of the shooting, the mother of three said she was shocked to receive a call from the hospital informing her that her husband had been shot. Terkejutlah sebab uh, saya ingat ke dia penat ke apa kan, uh, tapi uh, kena tengok waktu je lah, so dia suruh saya datang segera lah. Uh, masa saya datang ini, suami saya dah masuk bilik, bilik OT dah. Sebab dia ses memang masa dia datang tu dia sedar lagi, dia bagi nombor telefon saya pun semua untuk uh, hospital call. Uh, in the meantime, Siti Nur Aida also expressed gratitude for the suspect's arrest and thanked the police for their commitment. 
The Yang Di Petuan Agong has decreed for the responsible parties overseeing the combat diving pool construction at Kem Iskandar in Johor to explain the reasons behind the delay. Sultan Ibrahim said he wanted the matter to be clarified by the Johor Public Works Department and the Mersing District Engineer. It was in early May 2018 that Sultan Ibrahim officiated the groundbreaking ceremony for the pool in Mersing, and its construction was slated for completion by December 2022. Now, Sultan Ibrahim, who is also the Special Forces Group GGK Colonel-in-Chief, is furious that the pool is still under construction. In his social media post on Monday, the king said that he was informed on Sunday that six extensions were applied to extend the construction works by the relevant parties. On Monday, he found out that the project signboard at the construction site had been demolished. The question posed by the king was, why was it demolished? The ruler said he wanted the matter to be clarified by the Johor Public Works Department and the Mersing District Engineer. The king also decreed for the reinstallation of the project signboard at the construction site. Previously, Sultan Ibrahim had decreed for the pool to be constructed for the 21st Group Garakkas Commandos training purposes. Defense Minister Dato Sri Muhammad Khalid Nordin said the project was awarded to the Public Works Department. Works Minister Dato Sri Alexander Nantalinki's office said investigations were underway to establish the delays. Moving on, analysis on the second sample of mussels and water taken from Port Dixon shows that it still contains biotoxins that are above the safe limit. The analysis was carried out by the Kuala Lumpur Fisheries Biosecurity Center Laboratory. According to Negeri Sembilan Fisheries Department Director Kasim Tawi, levels of 800 parts per billion on the second sample were lower than the first sample but are still not safe for consumption. A third sample was taken on Monday and results are expected this Friday. As such, mussels from the area are still not safe to eat and the ban on selling them is still in place. He explained that the presence of biotoxins in the waters occurs naturally and is likely to be accelerated by weather changes or the nutrient content of the seawater. Singapore's new Prime Minister to take office on May 15th. News from the Foreign Front when we return. Dapatkan arah kiblat, doa harian dan Al-Quran secara digital di aplikasi Waktu Salat Malaysia, kini berwajah baru. Jangkau kita hijun bawah ini, siapa suruh bijak sangat. Suruh dalam semak, takut ditahan polis. Tiada lesen tapi masih nak merempit. Lesen pun tak ada kan? Lesen tak ada bang. Berani buat, berani tanggunglah. Saksikan 999 selasa jam 9 malam di TV3 dan stream sekarang melalui tonton. We're back with the foreign front. A bishop and several other people were stabbed on Monday during a sermon in Sydney that was being streamed online just two days after the city was rocked by a mass stabbing in a mall. Now, the incident happened at the Christ the Good Shepherd Church in the suburb of Wakeley. In the live-streamed video of the sermon, a man dressed in dark clothing can be seen approaching the bishop before appearing to strike him with a weapon that was not immediately identified. Police responded to reports that a number of people had been stabbed but said none of their injuries were life-threatening. They also said that a man has been arrested and taken to an undisclosed location. Following the attack, large crowds gathered outside the church with unverified footage posted online appearing to show some attacking the building and emergency service vehicles. The stabbing comes days after six people were killed in a mass stabbing at a shopping mall in the same city.
Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong announced on Monday that he will hand over power to his successor, Lawrence Wong, on May 15th. The date for the handover was announced in a statement from the Prime Minister's office, a key detail in the country's long-planned leadership transition from the third generation to the fourth generation political team. After he is sworn in at 8 p.m. local time on May 15th at the Istana, DPM Wong, who is currently the Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister, will be Singapore's fourth Prime Minister. Lee, in a statement, has called the leadership transition a significant moment. He also added that Wong and his team have worked hard to gain the people's trust, notably during the COVID-19 pandemic. An election is expected to follow in the months after the handover. As Israeli violence prolongs, Zionist airstrikes and shelling have continued to attack multiple areas across Gaza since early Monday. In the past 24 hours, at least 68 people have been killed and close to 100 people were left with different injuries. The attacks concentrated in the central area where the regime is still operating aggressively in the northern part of the Nusirat camp and the area in the southern part of Wadi Gaza that was designated as safe for evacuees and displaced families to move to in order to avoid being bombed and killed. In the meantime, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres calls for de-escalation and says the world cannot afford another war in the Middle East. He warned the adversaries not to further escalate tensions in the region with further attacks Madam following mutual air attacks over the past two weeks. The Middle East is on the brink. The people of the region are confronting... Leverkusen win first Bundesliga crown. Sports after this breather. Okay. Rumah dah siap kemas. Sekarang, bolehlah fokus tengok program menarik di Raya Ketujuh. Alhamdulillah. Ibu setuju nak seminang. Kau yang paksa aku. Robok! Robok abang macam tu. Buat tipu! Buat segera tipu! Ini yang ibu nak kan? Ini yang ibu nak kan? Saksikan di TV3 dan stream sekarang melalui Tonton. back with sports, football, the German Bundesliga. Undefeated Bayer Leverkusen sealed their maiden league title with five games to spare after thrashing visitors Werder Bremen 5-0 on Sunday. 
Leverkusen opened the scoring after Victor Boniface scored from the spot in the 25th minute following a reckless challenge on Jonas Hoffmann. Granit Xhaka then doubled their lead in the 60th minute with a stunning curler to the left post and substitute Florian Wirtz fired a scorcher just outside the box eight minutes later to make it 3-0 for the home side. The German bagged another goal in the 83rd minute after executing a flawless counter-attack before the 20-year-old completed his hat-trick seven minutes later to cap his team's five-star performance and secure Leverkusen's first-ever trophy in 31 years. With this win, Xabi Alonso's side remain unbeaten in 43 games in all competitions this season and are on course to complete a treble. Still on football, the Dutch Eredivisie. Ajax bounced back from a humiliating 6-0 loss against Feyenoord last week by beating Twente 2-1 at home on Sunday, boosting their chances in the European football next season. Twente took the lead just after the half-hour mark when Ricky van Volswinkel headed in Dan Rotz's brilliant delivery into the box. Brian Brobby, who was left unmarked, then drew level for Ajax in the 59th minute after heading home Kenneth Taylor's free kick. With nine minutes remaining, Steven Bergvin scored the winner for the home side from the spot following a foul on Devena Rensch inside the box. John Van Schip's men survived the nervy conclusion to take the win and move up to fifth in the standings with 48 points, seven points behind fourth-placed AZ Alkmaar. On to motorsports, the 2024 MotoGP Americas Grand Prix. Aprilia's Maverick Vinales completed a perfect weekend after the pole sitter secured an unbelievable win in Monday's race. A clutch problem from the lights saw Vinales drop to 11th position, but the Spaniard battled his way back to take the lead and eventually win the race. With the victory, the 29-year-old became the first rider in history to win a MotoGP race on three different manufacturers, Suzuki, Yamaha and now Aprilia. Red Bull Gas Gas Tech 3's rookie Pedro Acosta finished second, becoming the youngest rider to take back-to-back -back podiums, while Ducati's Inea Bastianini was third. Championship leader Jorge Martin, who leads the title race with 80 points, finished fourth, while reigning champion Francesco Bainaya was fifth. Coming up, five Indonesians held over scrap metal theft. Soro dalam sema, takut ditahan polis. Tiada lesen tapi masih nak merempit. Lesen pun tak ada kan? Lesen tak ada apa? Berani buat, berani tanggunglah. Saksikan 999 selasa jam 9 malam di TV3 dan stream sekarang melalui tonton. Pembunuhan yang paling kejam yang pernah berlaku di negara ini. Lah. Dia diseksa. Itu yang saya tak boleh nak lupa. <laughs> Keadaan masa itu nampak uh, langkabut sikit. Memang sedih. Di situ menggemparkan negara. Ada sesuatu yang sedang berlaku di sana. Kita nak cari kebenaran. Menyoroti kes-kes yang pernah menggemparkan dunia dan Malaysia, segalanya akan dirungkai dalam fail mahkamah setiap Rabu 9 malam terbaharu di TV3 dan stream sekarang ditonton. Thanks for staying with us. Five Indonesian men were arrested by the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA, for attempting to rob a tugboat and a scrap metal barge in the waters off eastern Johor. The men were detained at 3.8 nautical miles south of Tanjung Penyusup Kuta Tinggi. Johor MMEA Tanjung Sedili Acting Director, Maritime Commander Muhammad Najib Sam said the incident occurred when the agency received a report from the Johor Port Authority about a tugboat ferrying scrap metal at 10.45 a.m. on Sunday. He said the suspects were believed to be trying to steal the scrap metal from the barge that was on its way from Labuan to Port Klang. Upon noticing the MMEA's boat, the suspects tried to escape but failed and they were detained at 11.50 a.m.
Muhammad Najib said that MMEA officers brought the suspects and vessel to the Pungarang Maritime Post for further action. However, there was a leak in the boat, and it sank near Tanjung Bulat while on the way to the Maritime Post. The five suspects, all Indonesians aged 31 to 53, were then brought to the Tanjung Sedili Maritime Zone Office to aid in investigations. Kita dapat menahan uh, sebuah bot kayu tanpa nama yang sedang uh, dengan penuh dengan barangan curi, uh, curi yang dipolehi daripada bas tersebut dan semasa diiring ke pos maritim pengerang bot tahanan telah mengalami uh, bot yang telah di kemitan telah mengalami kebocoran dan telah tenggelam pada kedudukan dua batu nautika daripada Tanjung Bulat Najib said the modus operandi used by the thieves was similar to the previous nine successful MMEA interceptions since 2018. The thieves target slow-moving barges and tugboats, stealing scrap metal, ropes or other accessible items. The case has been classified under Section 380 of the Penal Code for Theft and Section 6 bracket 1 bracket C of the Immigration Act for not possessing any identification documents. All the suspects were remanded for 14 days starting Monday. Only days out of prison, an ex-convict was brought to the Kutabaru Sessions Court in Kelantan and charged with two counts of sexually assaulting his younger sister. The 34-year-old man pleaded not guilty to both charges before Judge Nick Habri Muhammad. Now, on the first count, he was charged with committing non-physical assault by causing his 17-year-old sister to watch or hear any representation in whole or in part of persons engaged in sexual activity. The offense under the Sexual Offenses Against Children Act was allegedly committed in a house at 10 p.m. last April 6th. He faces imprisonment for up to 10 years or a maximum fine of 20,000 ringgit or both if found guilty. He was also charged with committing physical sexual assault on the teenager at the same location at about 11 a.m. last April 8th. The charge, framed under the same law, provides imprisonment for up to 20 years and is liable to whipping upon conviction. The man was not allowed bail and the court set May 6th for mention. In Negeri Sembilan, a lorry driver who evaded a roadblock and was involved in a 50-kilometer chase before trying to ram a motorcycle ridden by a traffic policeman five days ago was charged in the Kuala Pila Magistrate's Court. The accused was charged with attempted murder after it was alleged that he tried to force the police who was chasing him on a motorcycle off the road by trying to crash into the latter's machine. 21-year-old Muhammad Hasrul Nizam Hasim pleaded not guilty to all the charges read against him before Magistrate Saiful Sayoti. He was accused of attempting to murder Corporal Muhammad Nur Hafizi Amaruddin, aged 34, at kilometer 5 of Jalan Serting Tunga, Keratong, Jimpul, between 12.30 p.m. and 1.15 p.m. on April 9th. The charge was brought under Section 307 of the Penal Code, which carries a maximum prison sentence of 20 years and a fine if convicted. He was also charged with driving recklessly and dangerously at kilometer 9 of Jalan Bahau Kemayan at 12.25 p.m. on April 9th under Section 42, Bracket 1 of the Road Transport Act. For the third charge, he was accused of careless and inconsiderate driving at the same time and place, with a charge framed under Section 43, Bracket 1 of the Road Transport Act. The court set bail at 18,000 ringgit, and he has been ordered to report himself at the nearest police station once a month until the case is disposed of. May 6th has been fixed for case management as well as to allow the accused to appoint a lawyer. In Sabah, police have arrested a man for setting fire to a car owned by a man he believed was involved in a relationship with his wife. Beaufort District Police Chief Deputy Superintendent Ismail Abdullah said investigations revealed the owner arrived at his house in Mumbakut and was informed by his brother-in-law that the suspect had entered the victim's premises. Now, the suspect had opened the victim's car door and threw something inside before leaving the scene hastily. Examination of the victim's car revealed that the driver's seat Seat belt, steering wheel, and dashboard were on fire, incurring losses amounting to 20,000 ringgit. A police report was lodged and the suspect was arrested in Sipitang at around 6.30 p.m. on Saturday. The suspect has been remanded for seven days until April 21st. The case is being investigated under Section 436 of the Penal Code for Mischief by Fire.
as we wrap up Nightline this time around, let's take a look at Thai locals and foreign tourists uh, splashing and spraying with water in the streets of Bangkok as the Southeast Asian country kicked off its annual Songkran Festival ushering in the Thai New Year. With that, I'm Sabrina Zainal. Thank you for tuning in and stay safe.